Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome to the virtual vloggy from an undisclosed location. My name is Hazel Rose. I am an artist, a lover, freak, and I want to welcome you to the vlog. I have a very special guest with me today. She's an artist, she's an activist, she's an incredible human being, and one of my dearest friends on this planet and this universe. Welcome, Miss Coco Pela. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're live from Oakland, is that right? I'm live from West Oakland, Bart, yep. Yes! Sick, and how are you today? Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, it's an honor. We have some exciting things to talk about. We have some heavy things to talk about. Uh, we're also here celebrating your new single, Whose World, Green New Deal. Um, Shout out to Mom. Oh, and we're, we may get a little mini live performance today for Lucky. We want to dedicate today's show to Ahmad Arbery, who he would have been 26 today. On that note, there's crazy stuff going on on this planet and in this country all the time and you have taken an active part in taking a stance in a lot of these issues you have a, an incredible voice uh you're a producer you're a singer a hip-hop artist lyricist teacher we taught together in richmond california we did we taught mindfulness we actually created children's remixes to popular songs and we performed for kindergarten mosh pits, which was one of my favorite experiences of my fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> they be on 10 with no drugs or alcohol. Like they, yeah. the turn up is Y'all ain't never seen no turn up if you ain't seen the super babies turn up. I haven't talked for a while and I'm really starting to miss it just because that genuine spirit and that honesty and that fresh magic of like the kids' eyes. And you can really make an impact on kids. Like they're Hell listening, yeah. you know. Can you tell us a little bit more about your work as an artist and activist like leading into where you're teaching now, which is a nonprofit called Youth Versus Apocalypse doing climate justice work? Yes, I came into the arts and activism world through being a young person and an urban youth myself. The first organization that I started fucking with was Youth Speaks and then Youth Movement Records and then Destiny Arts. And at some point I was rocking with all three at the same time. And then also while I was there, I was on the youth board. So, 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 so. anyway. I was in the workshop committee. And of course, it literally like ended up tracking my whole life because I learned how to facilitate, develop curriculum. I was still a young person, a teen. And so I've just continued to do it. So at first it wasn't like, oh, I wanna give back to the children. It was like, I wanna facilitate creative writing workshops or a singing, songwriting, rapping workshop for my peers. And then I just kept getting older. <laughs> so now I'm just an adult doing it. That's kind of how that all started. And that's the same thing with coming into like activism. I'm in the Bay Area, at least for me coming up as a youngster, there were a lot of artists that kept political and social content in their music and used their music to create change and create joy and recharge people. And so I think I hella respected that and kind of fell in those footsteps. I'm just starting my official organizing activist journey in that way. I think you can use art as activism, but I've gotten my hands a little more in the dirt these days. And that's been actually exciting for me. The quote that's been my guiding star as of late has been this Tony K. Bambara quote. And I think originally she wrote it about the writer, but then it's been used sometimes for artists, which is that the artist's role is to make the revolution irresistible. I didn't come up only with artists who were talking about social and political change and liberation. I also came up with folks who were just rapping about the world that they saw or 
on some industry shit, being like the cool slick rapper. It was, you know, as you know, hip hop is very male dominated. I've had a long journey of where do I fit? How much do I show where my mind is at as far as social and political ideals and what makes sense? And so I think I'm in a chapter where I'm like, fuck it. This is really who I am. This is what I'm talking about nine times out of 10 with my people. And not that I can't make songs about like love and dancing and all of those things that are really fun, but also wanting to integrate something about who I am as a person and the world that I want to see. Because it's easy to get hopeless now and music is so healing and it's like you said, it can make things irresistible. It can paint that picture of what is possible. Can you tell us specifically about Youth Versus Apocalypse, which is such a sick name for an organization? What do y'all do? What are some issues that you guys are fighting for at the moment? I'm going to do this imperfectly because I came on board as an adult supporter at Youth Versus Apocalypse, which is a youth-led organization based in Oakland, but it's full of young folks from all over the Bay Area, from many different backgrounds, Black, Brown, poor, working class, middle class, queer, gender queer, first generation, immigrant folks, female, like all of the people who's, who are heavily impacted indigenous folks, basically the frontline communities, the communities that are impacted the most and also exploited the most by these systems of oppression. So YBA, as we call it, is doing so much and has done so much, it's hard to actually speak on everything. But I will say this, they are responsible for the climate strike that happened in San Francisco in September 2019, where 30,000 folks showed up and showed out. A lot of young climate activists and students walked out and left school kind of to make that statement and also frontline community allies participated. In March of 2019, they were organizing to have an action in, in Frisco, I believe in front of the federal building, and they had planned on 100 people showing up and 2,000 people showed up. Oh my God. Storm market. <laughs> yeah, and so between March and September, it went from supposed to be 100, but it's 2,000 to 30,000. Um, they are also responsible. They participated along with other organizations. Sunrise and Earth Guard Guardians, I believe, were two of the other organizations. But there was a video that went viral with Senator Feinstein. Basically, the young folks went to her office and urged her to sign on to the Green New Deal. And she, at first, was very defensive. And I have my own Green New Deal. And they were like, no, that's not good enough trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. I'll tell you what, we have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. Senator, if this doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with these consequences. I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. Senator, the cost of and not taking this action is far higher than the cost of what the Green New Deal will be. And there is what? enormous popularity for this bill around okay. the whole country. We well, you know better than I do. We this won a big election. Yeah, that was that's part of what the, the follow-up action was. They also started as, as actually youth versus coal in West mm. Oakland. They've been trying to build a coal terminal here in West Oakland. The dude's name is Phil Tagami. He and his folks are trying to build a coal terminal in West Oakland. And Oakland has been saying, no, we already have environmental racism. We already have lead poisoning. McClyman's shut down recently because they found TCE in the groundwater. And they had to do all this testing to make sure that it wasn't getting into the air. So there's already a long history of environmental racism in frontline communities. And so Oakland actually was like, no, we don't want this cold terminal. But then Bill, who has connections with folks with big money, currently they're suing the city of Oakland to try to get them to allow the cold terminal. And there was a whole campaign to get influential African-American, Black Oaklandites, signed on to co-sign. And so they did this 
award ceremony where they invited different folks like Marshawn Lynch and community organizers. And a lot of folks pushed back. But anyway, fundraiser or something and YVA signed up on the Eventbrite to show up and they actually ended up like moving the fundraiser to, I don't know if it was Tagami's house or somewhere in the hills. So they're a powerful, like yeah. badass. Yeah, they're a badass group, but they, they've been changing policy and they've been enacting change. So currently there are a couple campaigns. Take Back Our Power, that's a pg and &E campaign. About two weeks ago on Earth Day, they called into a Zoom board meeting that was held last minute where pg and &E was deciding on whether or not to take on a contract for nuclear power from the Diablo Valley power plant. And they spoke and they urged the board members not to take it on. And so they effectively have helped tip the scale so that they didn't decide to bring this, I think it's called the Bright Choice, the option into the pg and &E contract. And so the thing about that was it was gonna be like the low income, cheaper choice. So then of course, those frontline communities, folks with less money would then have the option for a cheaper choice, but of course it's nuclear power. and. Oakland and Berkeley have already decided that they are nuclear free, that we don't want nuclear power. So it was a kind of a shady way to do that, but they they did that. They have a campaign for divesting from CalSTRS. CalSTRS is like the teacher the retirement pension. And so they have investments in big oil mm -hmm. and we've been trying to push the teachers and our community to tell CalSTRS like you need to divest from big oil. If our teachers are for the youth and the youth are gonna be here in the future, then yes. there's no reason that you should be investing in fossil fuels and non-renewable energy. We are the Earth Guardians Bay Area crew and Youth First Apocalypse. We're a group of young activists helping to save our future from the climate emergency. We saw how fast everyday people around the world can work together when the scientists told us about the dangers of the coronavirus. We know we have the same power to work together to make a just and healthy future for all. Mother Nature, indigenous leaders, frontline communities, and climate scientists have been screaming out that we need to leave oil in the ground. Adults in powerful positions have not been listening. Instead, they are investing a ton of money in the fossil fuel industry. As long as these companies keep getting money, they're going to use it to keep looking for oil so they can drill for it. We learned about a super important action that can stop this. It's called divestment. So what is divestment? It's when a person or organization takes money out of certain types of banks, companies, and funds. Divestment can take power away from the industries that are causing really big harm. Divestment frees up money to be invested in solutions, like green jobs. In California, we found out that most of our teachers have no idea that more than $6 billion of their retirement money is being invested in fossil fuel companies. It's extremely weird because over the last 10 years, fossil fuel companies have actually been losing money. Our teachers would have been making more money if CalSTRS wasn't invested in destruction. Visit our website to learn how you can demand divestment and get people around you organized. We're, We're here, here to, to help, help each, each other. other. We don't have time to tell you all the bomb shit wow. that the department has done. Recently, I organized with a coalition of organizations, the online climate strike that happened starting on Earth Day that went through Ramadan. There were different online actions. www.youthversusapocalypse.org. All of their campaigns are up there. Their backstory, awesome inspirational videos. I got the chance to song for them, which featured a climate activist in their organization by the name of Dulce and three other climate activists who were spitting spoken word on the song, Lizbeth Ibarra, Katarina Gaines and Sarah Goody. And the beat was made by Germ Beats and Ryan Nicole from Oakland, MC activist, spoken word legend. actress, vocalist, legend in her own right featured on it. I got to lace the hood. It was so dope because we did all of that literally from within the shelter in place. So folks were wow, recording okay. vocals on their phone and 
having Zoom songwriting sessions. Then we sent all the vocals and the sessions out to this mix and mastering engineer out in Abuja in Nigeria who hooked it up, whose name is Kila Mix. And then Frankie Lopez from the Peace Poets on the East Coast edited the video. We had our community all send in clips. There's a TikTok challenge going on right now, the No One Is Disposable, No ID Challenge. And so we had clips of people doing that, clips of people taking their signs out. So the song is called No One Is Disposable. It's hella bomb. And there's a music video out right now. The link to it below. Let them know they can't throw us away, no. Let them know they can't throw us away, no. Let them know they can't throw us away, hey. No one is disposable. COVID and climate change ain't far from the same. People in the margins disrespected and blamed. They put oil and gas infrastructures where we play. Contaminate the land, air, and the rain. Let them know they can't throw us away, no. Let them know they can't throw us away, hey. No one is disposable. Well, I got a news flash for you folks. Our youth are ravenous savages and they ain't gonna take no more. So, kiss your billions to sleep tonight. Cause come morning time. We gon' retrieve our birthright Though they try to change us We are unbreakable You have forgotten what happens when we unite Together we are strongest and we will fight We need a livable future and not just for the wealthy I'm fighting for a world where people will be prioritized over profit A world where we no longer have to fear poverty, immigration, white supremacy, racism, sexism, homophobia, and other truly ugly things in this truly beautiful world. I stand with those who continue to be systematically silent, with the indigenous leaders who are filled with knowledge but are constantly mistakenly spoken for. That's incredible. So you've mentioned the Green New Deal. You said it's something that you and your youth are in support of. I know um, your song is called Who's World Green New Deal. Also, I want to shout out to Naomi Klein, who's an incredible writer and activist. It's actually her birthday today, too, as well. Hey! And she wrote This Changes Everything, which is all about what we could do to create a Green New Deal. For people that don't even know what that is, can you give us a brief overview of what it is? One way to describe the Green New Deal is that it is somewhat of a blueprint of how we would have a just transition, meaning transition our society and economy that currently is reliant upon fossil fuels and dirty energy, non-renewable energies like coal, petro, fossil fuels, gas, and even some, some forms of electricity are not necessarily renewable. How we would go from the current non-renewable energy run society that is hiking up the temperature of our atmosphere. There's the greenhouse gas emissions, the CO2s that get released into the air, both by the burning of fossil fuels and non-renewable energy, and by cow farts. Isn't that crazy? Cows have four stomachs. They fart methane, <laughs> gas. That actually is, if you look at number one and number two, the burning of gas and cows farts, the methane gas, are in the top for what's driving up the greenhouse gas emissions in our atmosphere, which is what holds the heat in, which is why we have this climate change, which is why we have this heating that's going on some places that there's rising water, some places there's no water, all this stuff related to climate change. And of course, the other thing too about the cows is then to make space for more cows, for the meat industry, you have to cut down trees, right. trees we know convert CO2 to oxygen. Also, it's never good when you cut down hell. I mean, there's all these different reasons. The Green New Deal is a green way for us to transition our economy so that it doesn't rely upon those things. Without the frontline communities, the communities who are impacted the most by climate change, by systems of oppression, particularly we're talking racism, attempted genocide, sexism, young people's oppression, right? So we're talking about those oppressions in particular, but there are more and everyone is affected by it. 
So how do we transition it in a way where it doesn't fall down on those communities the most? Because one of the ways that people will spin it is like, no, if we transition to a green society, what's going to happen to PG&E workers? What's going to happen to people working on oil rigs? What's gonna, da, 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 da? Basically talking about the working class people of the world, right? And in the Green New Deal, it talks about what kind of green jobs could be created. And basically, the only thing standing in between us and a Green New Deal is the 1% being greedy and wanting to maintain power and control of the world's resources and of their money, basically. So that's the only thing. The Green New Deal is totally possible, doable, way better for every single person, including the people who oppose it. Also, the, the dope thing about the Green New Deal and about climate justice and about ending human-caused climate chaos is that you release two birds with one cage. I don't like to kill birds, but Ooh, you, I love it. Yeah. you basically can end different forms of oppression and the harshness of how those oppressions are impacting those groups and create breathable air for people, clean water, and hey. the possibility of us having earth where we can grow food. The, the things that are endless. Definitely AOC was, took like a humongous hand in creating this Green New Deal. And I am nowhere near an expert, but we have less than 10 years to like turn this around. And that's also a part of the Green New Deal is it lays out, okay, we got to draw down these greenhouse gas emissions, draw down the temperature that we're at right now and where we're headed before the year 2030. But this has to be a plan that we're enacting starting now. If by 2030, we, we aren't already drawing down the temperature in our atmosphere, our emissions. I mean, we know it will not. What's crazy about COVID is that we've seen that this massive scale change can happen because half the people are not working the economy is shut down this is the perfect time to enact something new when many people have lost their jobs and we've seen that there's trillions of dollars that are available when they say well we don't have the money to do these kind of things hello y'all just snuck in a bunch of corporate bailouts into these covid relief bills and the money is there the opportunity is there i commend you for the work that you're doing and we all need to join in this work because like you said the clock is ticking we often have seen like Activism is for those people over there who care about the world. We, we're we past the point where like, oh, I hope that the way that I'm living my life doesn't affect my children or my children's children. No, boo-boo. It's affecting your life right now. And of course, we do want to create a world where generations from now can still go outside of the house and breathe in and out without a mask. Or look at the ocean and see fish swimming around or Marines. touch a tree. Yeah. yeah, but it's also like, if we just look around at the quality of life for all people right now on the earth, it's already very clear. And you know, you and I are both born and raised in the US. And so we've, we're the owning class people of the world as USers, even though in the US there's a mix of class backgrounds and access to resource, right? But we have been able to live in somewhat of a bubble. If, we, if you're born and raised in the US, and the rest of the world, many places in the world that don't have the history of going around and colonizing and stealing resources from other places, don't have access to the resources that we have here, or even the mentality of being able to like, leave your house and go to the Target and just buy this or complain to your supermarket, oh, why don't you have X import from here? This is partly because we are an owning class country, a dominant country, and so, a lot of USers are freaking out about what's going on, but for us, I think it's an opportunity to see the curtain is being pulled back and to see like this shit actually hasn't been working for most of the world's population right. for a long time. And in order for us to have the quality of life, the exorbitant, just over, it's just too much. Yeah. The lifestyles that we're encouraged to have or to see, many people have had to be exploited mistreated, you know, systematically separated from their land, from their resource, targeted by genocide, been forced to participate in varying forms of enforced servitude. We have in this country a history of 
the enslavement of African people um, against their will to work for free. And that's part of how we have also amassed and created so much resource. But if we look at it like that as stealing African people, oil, gold, diamonds, but also the people, that's another thing if we look at the history of where Africa's at right now, and the access to resources, you have to kind of put into the equation the fact that millions of people were transported as bought and sold as goods, even though I know that my ancestors were not goods, we're full human beings. But I'm saying that to say, it's just important for us as USers to use the privilege that we have to create a world where all people can live, where no one is exploited or mistreated. It's 100% possible to have a world and a society where people aren't exploited, it will be different, you know? But I think that we've seen over the 500 plus years that the U.S. has been here and created and the West has been colonizing and terrorizing the brown places in the rest of the world, that having hella money, power, dominance, military arms doesn't make you happy. So if those things were gonna make us happy, we would have been happy by now. We're not happy, we still have people committing suicide, people hella depressed, people hurting each other and others, you know, and themselves. Just to put it into perspective, the only thing that's really stopping us is like arrogance, greed, and fear. But this is a great opportunity, as you said, to look around and see, wow, the way that I'm being impacted is the way that even on a small scale, I can feel just some reverberations of how the rest of the world has had to live and get by for hella long based on my country and the privilege and the resource that is getting stolen and kind of pulled into to our system. So the side note about the corporate bailouts, I just wanted to say back to Youth versus Apocalypse. Youth versus Apocalypse has also teamed up in solidarity with the People's Bailout and this past May Day, International Workers' Day, did another online action. That's when they did the official launch of the music, the No One Is Disposable music video. And they're working hard to bring to folks' consciousness the necessity of a people's bailout, which would mean, you know, people-centered justice and reciprocity versus trying to make sure that the corporations are protected. Green New Deal, research it. It's important that we know about it, that we be talking about it, that we be researching it, that we be having arguments about it. Like, what? That's not the Green New Deal. This is the Green New Deal. This is not a time to hesitate and try to be a perfectionist before you open your mouth and you speak on something. Do your research, but also share the information. You know, this is a time for us to act and not hesitate. I'm absolutely honored to be your friend. You have just been such a lifelong commitment to justice and truth. And it makes me cry because you're just an incredible human being and you work so hard to get the consciousness that you're at. Would you grace our fine audiences with a quick performance from Who's World Green New Deal by Coco Kayla? Thank you. The one thing I forgot to mention about Who's World Green New Deal is that it's produced by Hawk Beats, who is a legendary... Bay Area international producer, content creator, visual graphic artist from the Bay Area who was raised in Cuba, who passed recently this December. Also, I've known him since I was a teenager and it was really like a very emotional experience to release this song without him. And he had heard the hook, but he never got to hear the rap Mm. verses. And it took a lot to like push past that grief to be able to put the song out. I felt his spirit present when finishing up the project because a lot of people don't know that Hawk, if you talk to him about like socioeconomic, political ideals, like he really could go there because yeah, like I said, he was raised in Cuba and just saw the world being addressed in a totally different way. So just want to give love and respect and acknowledgement to him, to his spirit, to his legacy. And it was such an honor to get to collaborate with him on this. And I was so excited about getting to do a different kind of a track with him. So I just want to put that out there because he will always be my big homie in heaven.
Yes. Um, the chorus goes, whose world is this? Whose world is this one? You, me, we are going to lift our voices, rise up and shift something. Same solutions to climate change could help end oppression. Picture no racism, sexism, classism pressing. Down and separated movements taking lives of people. That world we could build it, one that's fully peaceful. We need a Green New Deal. Them greenhouse gas emissions, many tell me how you feel. I'm feeling hot because it ain't been raining from the hills to the flatlands, power outages, fires. God, that's out here wearing masks and they still arrogant getting greedy, trying to mask the truth. Frontline communities hit the hardest. Look at the proof. How 40 to 70 percent of COVID deaths is black when we 22 percent of the pop. Now do the math, but there's power in the people. 99 to one. Simple, not easy. We can win it. Uh, we just begun. We facing down history. This humanity biggest threat, but there's beauty in the battle, baby. And it ain't over yet. Yeah. Whose world is this? Whose world is this one? Shout out to Nas. You, me, we are going to lift our voices. Rise up and shift something. So there it is. Ah! <laughs> I love it so much. This is the star Coco Kayla. <laughs> A rare exclusive performance. I want to ask where people can find you and what they can look out for. I know you have a music video coming out for Love Me All that was recorded at Bay Cat, directed by Nina Reyes Rosenberg of Mala Forever, featuring mixed ingredients and Young Fire. I know they can look out for that, which is going to be sick. Where else can they find you? What's coming next? Yes, and that music video was also produced by Alex Macias. Super excited about that project. You can find me at CocoPayless.com. Um, I'm Coco Pela across all social media platforms. And I'm working on this really dope women's liberation rap project that I'm going to release into the world soon enough. The first single off of it, Pretty Girls, the music video drops later this summer. <laughs> Yo, so will you join us again? Because this was nowhere near enough time with you. Thank you That's so right. much for your insights. I love you with all my heart and always will, you know that. I love you too. Have a beautiful day in the Bay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so let's all stay involved. Please click the links below to support the Green New Deal, to support Youth Versus Apocalypse. I encourage everyone to social distance if you can. Please social distance, please isolate if you're able to do so. I also wanted to say that I have an online virtual bedroom festival coming out again. It's our second bedroom festival. It's gonna be screening on Instagram at Miss Hazel Rose, M-I-S-S Hazel Rose. And that's gonna be on May 24th. We have some incredible special guests that will be there. So please tune into that. I also have some new music coming out. Please tune in, follow me on Spotify, Hazel Rose. Please protect yourselves and your beautiful communities. I truly love you from my heart to yours. Be welcome to dialogue, leave your comments and thoughts below. Thank you so much for joining us today. And a huge thank you to Coco Pela for your absolutely brilliant insights and beautiful music. Thank you. And please. Thank you for watching. It's me, Hassel Rose. Thank you so much for being a part of this and watching that blog that you just watched. Was it good? Did it suck? Let me know. Tell yourself you love yourself. Hug yourself. Hug a friend. Freaking change the world because this world is fucked. And we need you.